Hello, everybody. Sorry for the hiatus. Flex Tape Bun and I here are now going to record another episode for you, love you guys. So yeah. we're gonna. The hiatus. the hiatus is going to be even longer for my channel because it's going to be another week. Oh right, yeah. So let's start with my princess with Eric. Da da da. Let's go um, with um, Park. When you're dating someone, you expect surprises. Depending on who you're dating, the surprises can range from a new habit they may have, so may have or something that may change how you see them. When it comes to dating a demon, the possibilities become endless. That's right, I was in love with the demon. The many surprises he showed me included him being an incubus, him having tentacle powers, and him being an ex-noble from a large expanding kingdom. I didn't think any anything could take the cake on top of those things. I was wrong. Tentacle, tentacle powers. A little bit on the nose there. Fair. Yes. I was wrong. Tiny bit. I found myself dressed to the nines, sitting in my fiancé's luxury car as we drove into the city of Chicago. I didn't wear fancy clothes often, so feeling the lavish, fa lavish fabrics of the gown I was wearing against my skin was almost uncomfortable. So, I had to admit, when I saw myself in the mirror, I was floored at how I looked. I was in a beautifully designed red and black dress with matching heels and jeweled accessories. I, would, I still would never know how Eric was able to obtain it all, but he gifted the gown the shoes, and the jewelry to me with a simple smile. A part of me knew that he had made the dress by hand. He owned a custom suit shop and had access to the finest fabrics in the city. His skill wasn't limited to suits, however. He could make anything that was deemed as formal wear. As for the shoes and jewelry, I couldn't figure it out and had decided to let it go. The drive into the city became one filled with curiosity. Why did I have to be dressed up to? Where exactly were we going? Eric? Yes, my princess? Where are we going? A chuckle escaped Eric's lips as he continued to drive into the night. He is looking very snazzy, I have to say. Indeed he is. I told you. It's a surprise. A surprise that requires me to dress up like I'm going to a prom? Not a prom, exactly. Eric. Eric's smile grew as he lowered a hand from the wheel and took a gentle hold of my hold of mine, bringing it to his lips and laying a butterfly kiss over it. I promise you'll enjoy. You'll enjoy yourself. You have my word. I stared at Eric and a small blush adorning my face at his gentle words and kiss. Giving up at last, I nodded and simply let him guide us further into the heart of the city. Chicago was a beautiful city, especially at night. The lights that illuminated the street and streets and buildings were a grand sight to behold, and the lively aura of the night's energy that filled every alley and sidewalk was simply enchanting. You could take me out of Chicago, but you could never take the love of Chicago out of me. To my surprise, the traffic towards our destination was almost non-existent. We were the rich we were in the richest part of Chicago, and last we arrived at our destination, one that took me completely off guard. The outside looked like a regular business building. At the very top of the tower was a large sign that said, The Gateway, in bright yellow colors. Something about it stood out, somehow, which made me curious. What was in store in this place? Eric led me out of the car, opening my door for me and escorting me out with a gentle hand. As he closed the door behind me, a man dressed in a bellboy suit rushed up to Eric and held out his hands. Eric dug his hands into his tuxedo pocket and finally took out a small white envelope, passing it and his car keys to the bellboy. The bellboy took the items and quickly rushed to the driver's side of the car, driving it off like a valet. I watched the car head into a nearby parking lot as I unconsciously took Eric's arm. As I turned back to him, I could tell that I was in for more surprises. He handed me a mask and silently instructed me to put it on as we walked up the steps to the door. It fit like a glove. A pair of bellboys opened the door for Eric and me, revealing a lavish lobby with a single large pedestal platform in the middle of the room. Stepping up to it, we were stopped by a large woman in a dress suit. Invitation? 
I looked at Eric, watching him take out a golden slip of paper from his pocket and pass it to the woman. The guard looked over at the parchment before nodding to Eric and stepping away from her path to the pedestal. Where on earth were we going? I remained silent as we stepped up to the platform and settled into the middle of it, Eric guiding us to stop and stay still in place. Eric nodded to the guard, who simply nodded back and waved her hand in the air. As she did, the pedestal beneath us suddenly shifted and began to rise into the air. Whoa! I gripped Eric tightly as the platform beneath us ascended through the building. All around us were sights of pictures and diamond chandeliers. Whatever this was, I could tell that this was by no means a regular event. When we reached the top of the floor, or what I assumed to be a top floor, we were greeted by a pair of women in waitress suits, bowing to us in respect. As their bird tail feathers and pure black eyes presented themselves to me, I knew then that this was a demon party. The doors opened to a large ballroom, one that definitely didn't seem to fit inside of a suite room. All around were couples and groups mingling and dancing elegantly to the sounds of Victorian-style orchestral music. I was astonished, even as I was led in by Eric. Everyone was dressed in modern formal wear with a range of dresses and tuxedos. It was almost dizzying how much the aged music clashed with the modern fashion of the patrons. Yet, I couldn't tear my eyes away from the sight of the guests. Wow. Welcome to a small taste of the demon world, my princess. The guests were all demons, some with horns, some with tails, and the rest with an assortment of different looks. It was a conglomerate of people, and I felt a bit out of place as someone who looked obviously human. As we stepped further into this space, a voice tripped out. I guess you can read um, this one. Uh, I, we have no clue if this is female or not. Yeah, I'll I can't tell. Anyway. Eric, my boy, come fly over here, will you? I looked over to see a bird man with a polished tuxedo wave over us with a very handsome oh. gentleman with mouse ears on his arm. Despite the nerves running through my system, Eric and I walked over. Er as Eric bowed his head, I quickly curtsied. For some reason, the way the bird man carried himself made him seem like a prince. I was in awe of his gorgeous tail feathers and beak, accented by the lavish suit he wore. It's a bird man. Yep. Connor, you look splendid. I assume you approve your tuxedo. Approve? I absolutely love it. Ricardo here won't let go of me because of it. I looked over at the mouse man, who I assumed to be Ricardo, as he smiled coyly and hugged Connor's arm tight, nodding in agreement of Connor's words. I smiled a bit as Eric laughed. Very good. Thank you for inviting us to your... to your anniversary celebration. It is an honor to be in such company. Nonsense, thank you for attending. As, soon, as the son of the most powerful demon in the Abyssal Plains, it's only proper to invite you. Regardless, my own regret is not inviting you. Inviting your brothers, it must seem so rude. Eric waved his hand dismissively. I think nothing of it. We actually denounced our titles when we came to this world. You don't say. Well, good on you. You do such fabulous work as a designer here. It's no wonder your suit shop is unmatched. Connor finally turned his head to me and cocked it in curiously. I felt I felt a bit small under his gaze, but smiled respectively, respectfully back. And who might this lovely lady be? A human? Eric nodded and lifted my hand to his lips, kissing it respectfully before our conversation partners. This is my wonderful princess. I asked her to accompany me tonight to show her how elegant a demon ball can be. How oh, marvelous. I rarely get to meet humans. It's... It is an absolute delight to meet you. Connor held out his hands towards me, making me place my hand in it out of manners. Instead of kissing my hand, he lifted it to his beak and ger very gently nipped it a couple times at the back of it, making me giggle a bit. It's a pleasure to meet you too. Connor released my hand and smiled at me before looking back at Eric.
bird man. Yes. <laughs> uh, well, Eric, princess is an absolute... Uh, well, Eric, princess, it's an absolute. it's been an absolute pleasure to meet you. Please enjoy the ball. Dance and eat as much as you like. We shall, thank you. With that, Eric and I walked away from Connor and Ricardo, both of whom were waving at us before turning to find new conversation partners. So, this is a demon ball? Yes, Princess. You've been curious about what life was like for me in the demon world, yes? I nodded. I was indeed curious about Eric's life in the demon world, but I didn't expect him to give me an experience. This was completely out of the blue. Eric gestured to the room, where the couples on the dance floor were waltzing in sync. It was memorizing. This is a perfect representation of how Demon Royal celebrated. We had elegant balls filled with dancing and food. And they would only end when the sun came up. Really? I thought the demon world was like the Dark Ages. This seems like a fairy tale ball, not really medieval. Eric chuckled and walked in with me around the dance floor, continuing his explanation. The demon world may be stuck in the Dark Ages, but we do take inspiration from the human world. Your fairy tales inspired our celebrations. I couldn't stop staring at the dancers and the demons in the room. There were so many people dressed up like royalty that I felt almost underdressed. There were some glances my way, but none with ill intent. It was probably natural since I was a human in a room full of demons. Slyly, Eric led me onto the dance floor and began to waltz with me to the music. We remained outside the crowd, dancing to our own beat and sways as the rest of the dancers kept in time and stepped with the synchronized dancing. So, instead of getting phones and computers, you got balls and dresses? <laughs> you are correct. The demon world has no need for computers or phones, but new, but new traditions of celebration are always welcomed. No raves or clubs? Too human for our tastes. No light shows or DJs? That would require electricity, electricity my princess, which we don't care to use to, to us. It's a waste of energy. I pursued my lips at Eric. I pressed my lips at Eric as he slowly began to ease us into the crowd. I barely noticed the dancers moving aside and stopping their dances to stare at us as I locked eyes with Eric, continuing the conversation. Do demons have balls often? Unfortunately, no. Hosting celebrations takes a large amount of resources. So we save balls for only our most grand of occasions. Like birthdays? Demons don't celebrate birthdays, Princess. However, we do we do celebrate the peaceful uniting of kingdoms or the crowning of a new ruler. I became fascinated even as Eric began to twirl around me around and add elaborate steps into the dance between us. We both focused on each other as we let the world around us fade into a blurred outline of people and decor. However, the human world has provided demons here. It means to celebrate many more things. Like Connor's anniversary? Eric nodded and dipped me for a moment, staring deep into my eyes. Exactly. I held on to Eric, mesmerized by Ooh. his lovely purple eyes. I squeezed his hand gently and caused him to lift me back up and hold me close in a loving embrace. Good shit. Real good shit. Now this is an image I would want. <laughs> yes. And one day, I would love to hold an elegant ball for our union. Eric. My face began to glow a soft rosy red as, he, as I smiled up at my prince. I loved him with every ounce of my being, and a fairy tale wedding and ball seemed like a perfect way to celebrate. I stretched up on my toes and kissed Eric ever so gently before pulling away with a giggle. I would love that. Eric stared at me in surprise for a moment before chuck, chuckle, 
chuckling and nuzzling his head against mine, a playful but loving smirk against his lips. My beautiful princess, I am yours forever. And I am yours, my Prince Charming. And the night became one of fairy tale dancing and a seemingly happy ever after for me and my demon prince. Okay then. Now that should be in uh, the ex that should be in the extras after after we finish recording. Mm -hmm. And now we're gonna head oh. off to Damien, right? Yep. All right, let's do this. Literal quiet man of the group. Yep. And again, we're gonna keep our original name. Back to the park. Yep. I could never understand why, but whenever I found myself staring up in the sky at night, I always found myself lost in the moon's glow. The white and silver light just seemed to capture my attention, no matter how many stars peeked out of the darkness of space. It was impossible to tell how the moon was able to have this magic spell over me, but it was a spell I didn't think much on. After all, I had someone in my life to fill my thoughts with. Damien became my everything, my son, my stars. He was so precious to me, and I couldn't dare to think of letting him go. I wanted to cherish him for the rest of my life, and my heart solidified that promise in my chest. He was the first person I would see in the morning, and the last person I would see at night before going to sleep. My heart gave a gentle thump in my chest as I opened my eyes and stared at the man lying beside me, his hair tangled and messed about from sleep and his cheeks pink in peaceful slumber. How on earth did I get so lucky? Still, I was happy to know that I had finally found someone who made me feel absolutely happy, and I could only hope that I would I made him feel the same way. Mm. What is it? I love you. A simple smile and chuckle never made me feel so light. And I love you. I love you so much. I cuddled close to Damien. It was mid-afternoon, almost night, and Damien wasn't up writing his children's book, so we settled on watching a movie in bed before dinner. However, Damien held me closer than he usually did. I didn't complain. It was something. It was just something I noticed and didn't really care to acknowledge as significant at the time. However, what he said surprised me. Let's go to the city. Huh? I stared at Damien incredulously. Why did he want to go to Chicago, especially midway through the afternoon? Desp still, despite my confusion, Damien smiled down at me with a hopeful gaze. Can we? The city, the city is so much prettier at night. I couldn't say no to him. Damien carried an innocence in the eyes that always convinced me to say yes to his small requests. Besides, it had been a while since we had gone to the city. Some windy city air was due for taking in. The city lights were always lovely to behold. Sure, let me get dressed and we'll head out. It took us a bit to get dressed and drive into the city. Damien had gotten had got James to teach him how to drive when we got together, and now Damien was able to get us anywhere we needed without much difficulty. With La While Lakeshore Drive was still a terrible expressway, we were able to get to the loop by dinner. We parked in a lot and began to walk around the city taking in the sights of the magnificent mile and stopping in some new shops for a peek. It was exciting to see some of the Anderson toys being displayed in the windows of toy shops. Damien and I couldn't have been more proud of the company and Damien's brothers working behind it. Damien, look! I had to stop and point at a window display. Pose in a beautiful dance pose were two dolls, a boy and a girl, in front of an image of a beautiful spring sky. There was even a toy tree and fence to decorate the foreground. I was very certain it was designed for tourists, yet it seemed so out of the blue. Damien stared in awe, but slowly a smile grew on his face from the sight. He placed a hand on the window and peered closer at the pair of dolls, eyes full of wonder. This is brilliant. Yeah! I looked down beneath the window and stared at the plaque, obviously meant for describing the window display. A boy and girl meet... A meet and a story begins under a spring sky. That is so sweet. Damien nods and looks around. Are there any more like this window? 
Let's see. I took my time to gaze over the windows of the buildings, hoping to find another like it. I knew of shops doing this for the holidays, but this one seems to be too convenient to have just one display. I, look, I grinned as I locked my sight onto another window, going down the, around the corner towards Navy Pier. There! I gently grasped Damien's hand and led him to another window. I smiled, seeing the same pair of dolls embracing by a toy fountain. The image of the sky was darker, like the passing of time turned the sky into a soft orange. Oh, wow. What is this one? The plaque says, a dream to behold, endless like water. It was insanely symbolic, especially with the fountain with them. I felt my heart squeeze in glee, remembering how I met Damien, how he confessed his love to me in the spring hidden the mansion. Dreams were like endless, were endless like water, and I had indeed found mine with Damien. We continued down the block, catching windows with the same doll couple in different situations. They watched fireworks, went to the beach, did other activities together. It was so cute and romantic that we wound up arriving at Navy Pier before we knew it. However, for some reason, the pier was empty and devoid of people. Huh? Is Navy Pier closed today? Damien took his phone and checked the website, shaking his head. No, it says it's still open. Huh. I was flabbergasted. Navy Pier was a giant tourist attraction, yet no one was there. At my expression, Damien gave my hand a squeeze and guided me forward with him. Well, since... Mm. Blah. Uh, that's... Uh... That's, that's the first time you've done that in a while. Damn. Well, since there are no crowds, why don't we take advantage and explore by ourselves? Huh? Do you want to? Damien nodded, waiting for me to willingly come along for the ride. I grinned at the idea. We, I, we didn't have to wait in line for anything, nor did we have to maneuver our way through a bu busy tourist crowd of people. This is perfect. Damien and I began to walk through the pier, stepping into some of the shops. To my surprise, there were people working, and they were very excited to see us come up to their shops, giving us personal attention for whatever we needed. It was strange. We also managed to catch more displays of the doll duo in, similar, in smaller cases. They walked through a park, played it with a white cat. Were they new mascots for a brand that was spreading? I had to note their connection to Anderson Toys. I managed to catch a couple of the displays with accessories from their doll collection, like the clothes and the decorations. Did James or Matthew knew about them? Did Damien? Hey, Damien. Hmm, what is it? Did James or Matthew ever talk to you about these dolls? They're from Anderson Toys. Damien smiled and nodded. Nah, I know about them. Well then, who are they? I tried to escape Damien's lips as he guided me forward towards the area where the fer ferris wheel was. I'll... I'll tell you when we get onto the, on the ferris wheel. I grinned. While it was typical to ride the ferris wheel when you went to Navy Pier, something about being the only passenger seemed really exciting. Would the operators bring us to the top and let us enjoy the night sky? I hope so. When we arrived at the gate, the operators of the wheel smiled at us and escorted us into one of the pods. It was comfy and warm, despite it being cool outside. When they shut the doors, Damien and I smiled at each other, anxiously waiting for the pod to move. Finally, the wheel began to turn and we would slowly take it upwards. I couldn't help but be elated for the night sky we would see at the top. This is great. We're the only ones here and no one can bother us. Damien smiled before bringing out his cell phone and tapping through it quickly. There's just one more thing that can make this perfect. What's that? I half expected him to take a selfie of us. However, he handed me the phone ushering me to look at the screen. I took it with a confused expression and looked down to see what he was presenting me. I gasped. The doll duo was in front of the ferris wheel, with the boy on one knee holding up a ring to the girl underneath the beautiful night sky. 
It suddenly hit me why the dolls were everywhere. I slowly looked up at Damien, just as the Ferris wheel brought us to the top, and saw him on his knee presenting a ring to me. Oh my god. You and I have been through so much. You have given me absolutely everything. And made my story one worth telling the world over and over again. I want to make you as happy as you have made me. You deserve the world, and a million stars can't even begin to describe how wonderful you are. I humbly ask, will you marry me? My heart began to swell in joy, and tears slowly began to fall down my cheeks. Memory of us being together began to flood my thoughts, reminding me of how much we had gone through. I love this man. I would do anything for him, as he would do anything for me. And the love in his eyes only confirmed my feelings. This was meant to be. Yes. Oh my god. Yes. I leaned forward and hugged Damien tightly. Feelings qu quickly slipped the ring between us onto my ring finger and kissed my cheek. I was so happy I didn't know what else to say. I was going to marry the love of my life. As we pulled away, Damien leaned back and looked at the moon in the sky. It glimmered in the night, decorated with stars around its glow. That's that's a nice picture. The uh, that picture is absolutely adorable. It is. Tonight was the perfect night to see the city lights. Wouldn't you say so? I giggled, moving to sit beside him and cuddle up to him while viewing the night sky as well. I couldn't agree agree, agree more. I love you. I love you too. The night was indeed perfection. I got to see our story in the windows of Chicago, painted beautifully like a t fairy tale anyone would want to experience. I felt flattered to know that the city knew our story indirectly, but my entire being began to fill with warmth at how proud Damien was to have me as his. I couldn't wait to spend the rest of my life with Damien. Our story would end with a happy, happily ever after. And that's it. Yes, that that is it.